Thank you, Alex. I'm here at Mount Etna, an active volcano in Sicily, Italy. Just as you mentioned, Alex, this volcano is due to blow soon. However, we can never be 100% sure of when the volcano may erupt. For those of you out there who don't know exactly what we're dealing with here, volcanoes are awesome manifestations of the fiery power contained deep within the Earth. These formations are essential events in the Earth's surface, where molten rock, debris, and gases from the planet's interior are emitted. When thick magma and large amounts of gas build up under the surface, eruptions can be explosive, expelling lava, rocks, and ash into the air. Less gas and more viscous magma usually mean a less dramatic eruption, often causing streams of lava to ooze from the vent. The mountain-like mounds that we associate with volcanoes are what remain after the material spewed during the eruptions has collected and hardened around the vent. This can happen over a period of weeks or many millions of years. To understand more about volcanoes, we turn to volcanologist Dr. William Gregory Clark of the Community College of Allegheny County to understand exactly what is happening here. Good morning, Dr. Clark. Good morning, Ishan. Well, welcome to our studios today. So, I've, I've heard that Mount Etna is a stratovolcano. What exactly does that mean? Stratovolcanoes are formed by alternating layers of lava and rock fragments. This is the reason they are technically called composite volcanoes. Composite volcanoes usually erupt in an explosive way. This is easily observed from the eruption we just saw. This is usually caused by viscous magma being blocked up in the crater pipes creating an immense gas buildup. This is what causes an enormous eruption. Fantastic. Alright, so uh, I guess that covers composite. Uh, I've, al I've also heard of this other type of volcano called the shield volcano. Can you tell me maybe a little bit about that as well? There are two other types of volcanoes, shield and cinder cone. Shield volcanoes are huge in size. They are built by many layers of runny lava flows. Lava spills out of a central vent or group of vents. A broad shaped, gently sloping cone is formed. This is caused by the the very fluid basaltic lava, which can't be piled up into steep mountains. Shield volcanoes may be produced by hot spots, which lay far away from the edges of tectonic plates. Shields also occur in the mid-oceanic ridge, where sea floor spreading is in progress along the subduction-related volcanic arcs. The eruptions of shield volcanoes are characterized by low explosive lava fountaining that forms cylinder cones and splatter cones at the vent. I see. Very interesting. And uh, there's a third type, um, cinder cone. Can you tell me a little bit about that? A cinder cone is a steep, conical hill formed above a vent. Cinder cones are among the most common volcanic landforms found in the world. They aren't famous, as their eruptions usually don't cause any loss of life. The cones usually grow up in groups, and they often occur in the flanks of strap volcanoes and shield volcanoes. To sum up, the three types are composite, or stratovolcano, shield, and cinder cone volcanoes. Each differ in formation, shape, and explosivity. Alright, so how will this volcano affect, you know, the people living around this volcano? Uh, have we seen anything in the past that may indicate that these people are in a place of danger? You know, a large eruption can be extremely dangerous for people living near a volcano. Flows of searing lava, which can reach 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or more, can be released, burning everything in its path, including whole towns. Boulders of hardened lava can rain down upon villages. Mud flows from rapidly melting snow can strip mountains and valleys bare and bury towns. Ash and toxic gases can cause lung damage and other problems particularly for infants and in the, in the elderly. Scientists estimate more than 260,000 people have died in the past 300 years from volcanic eruptions in their aftermath. Um, Alright, so how exactly do we know that something fishy is going on with Mount Etna? You know, it's very similar to the way we found out about the eruption of Mount St. Helens. I'll tell you a little bit about that. The eruption of Mount St. Helens was not a surprise. For nearly two months, scientists have been monitoring the changes at Mount St. Helens. For a volcano to erupt, magma must move to the Earth's surface. Increased earthquake activity, eruptions of steam and ash, and changes in the shape of the surface of the volcano 
all signal magma is on the move towards the surface. Inside the volcano, solid rock that surrounds molten rock often cracks from increased pressure and causes earthquakes. Between March 20th and May 18th, more than 10,000 earthquakes were recorded beneath Mount St. Helens. The largest of these were, were felt by people living near the volcano. In addition to recording these discrete jolts characteristic of earthquakes, seismographs also detected continuous rhythmic vibrations called harmonic tremors. These numerous and small earthquakes were further evidence that the magma was moving within the volcano. When the 5.1 magnitude earthquake shook Mount St. Helen on May 18, 1980, the bulge collapsed. The resulting avalanche was the largest volcanic avalanche recorded in historical times. In turn, the sudden removal of masses of rock and ice by the avalanches triggered an explosive eruption of steam trapped in cracks and voids in the volcanic I was so close. Thank you very much for coming in today, Dr. Clark, and telling us and our viewers a little bit more about volcanoes. You're welcome. All right, back to you, Alex. Uh, let's see what Mount Etna is up to.